Welcome. This is Mrs. Rowe and welcome to our learning ChemCom from home series. So today I'm overviewing the melting versus dissolving lab that you were asked to do last week and we're adding to it the modeling, the particle nature of matter and using particle modeling to represent how our mo how, how the matter is interacting, maybe going through phase changes or forming mixtures as we look at these two very different processes of melting and dissolving. Um, it's very common for people to think that when something dissolves, it's melting. That is a very common misconception that we're hoping to clear up today. So I asked you during the lab last week, we took an ice cube. Um, I told you to get two or three things that you could easily melt. I took a, a pad of butter and I took some chocolate chips. And to save time, what I first did is I got the balance out and I got the same masses. So they were all equal amounts and I put them in the microwave. And at 20 second intervals, I kept checking them to see which one melted first. And interesting enough, it wasn't quite the same as the first time I did it. The first time I did it, the water took the longest to melt, the ice cube to melt into water, go through its phase change which made sense to me. Water has a high specific heat capacity because of the way water interacts. The molecules are attracted to each other. They are polar. That's something we're going to get into later. It takes more energy to get the phase change to happen. So in both cases, the butter was the first to melt. And if I had coconut oil, I would assume that that would melt even faster. Again, these interactions, how strong are the interactions between the molecules um, in the solid versus the liquid state? And then this time it took longer for my chocolate to melt. You see that nice shiny, I had to get it, I had to stir it to get it to melt. Um, but it doesn't matter how long it took, that's not what the goal of this is. The goal of this is to think about what is happening as we're going from a solid to a liquid as we are melting, and that is a phase change. So I use the modeling that you guys learned this week using dots to represent the molecules, the butter molecules, the sugar molecules, or the chalk that's in, in the um, chocolate or the water molecules. Now I could have gotten fancier. I could have done the one, uh, it's very hard for me to reach, but I could have done the one colored dot to represent oxygen and the two colored dots to do hydrogen and made that my water molecules. I could have gotten fancy like that, but I decided to just do simple um, particles for this just to illustrate what is happening as these things undergo phase change. And as you can see in the solid, as we learned when we looked at this yesterday, the particles are all pretty rigid in one rigid form set volume, set form. They're vibrating, but they're not leaving their place. They're so tightly packed together, there's really no room for them to move. But as we add heat, as we add energy, they are vibrating more and more. And as they vibrate more, they're creating more space between them, allowing them to now move, which we can see they have. There's a volume, I can, I can measure the volume, but there's no fixed shape anymore as these particles, these molecules and atoms are able to kind of move around in this greater space that they now have. That's a phase change. Simply added heat and caused them to move further and further apart. Let's compare over here. Let's do the second part to dissolving. So I have some colored sugar and just a jar of water. The water is my solvent in liquid form, so they're a little bit further apart. They're still staying in the container, fixed volume, not a fixed shape. The shape will obviously move around as I, it will form the shape of the container I pour it in. And then this represents one of my sugar crystals. So there's my sugar showing that it is again in solid. This one is in a solid form, so a solid solute going into a liquid. I'm not adding any heat. I'm not adding any energy. So what is going to happen? So let's find out. So this is all pretty simple stuff. But the idea behind it is important because it's such a common misconception. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this colored sugar and I'm going to pour it into the jar. And of course, it's, it might start to dissolve right away. What is happening, I'm going to do some stirring. And it's going to start to dissolve a little bit faster as I stir it. I really want to do it faster. I can put a cap on it and shake it. So the more I agitate, the faster I'm going to get this to happen because I'm trying to get the solvent molecules to, 
to bump into and interact with the solute. You can see, oh, it's fully dissolved. Now my water's got a little bit of a pinkish color to it from showing that it didn't just disappear. Now sugar is sweet, and so, oh, there's a little bit that didn't fully dissolve. Sugar is sweet, so if I were to taste this water, it would probably taste pretty sweet. I have not done any chemical change. This is a physical change. All I have done is if I look at my model here and how I'm modeling it, as the sugar drops into the solvent, the water particles are actually attracted to the sugar. Um, those are all terms we're going to get into later. You know if you mixed, if I put the butter in with the water, I'm not going to dissolve the butter because they don't like each other. They are going to, the butter will float on top, they will not mix. However, sugar and salt is soluble, and that's where we're going in this next chapter, solubility. And because it is soluble, it likes water, it's attracted to water, the water helps just pull all these particles that are in solid formation and just kind of pulls them apart, giving them that space again. And as they pull apart, they become smaller and smaller till we can't really see them anymore. They're still in there but they're now dispersed in between all the water molecules. So the difference with dissolving, we're not using heat or energy to increase vibration. We're using solubility, attraction between the solvent and the solute, and we're creating a mixture. I now have a sugar water mixture. I did not create a mixture in a phase change. I did not add anything new. When I melt, one thing's heated, it changes its state. When I dissolve, I need a solvent. I need to add. Notice here, there are two different things in dissolving, the solvent and the solute. And I need those two things for that to dissolve. So I hope that helps you with today's modeling exercise. What I would like to see for those of you doing this at home is to try to model it with something different than what I used for the examples here. Um, see what you can come up with. Maybe you want to get a little fancy and do the little water molecules a little more um, detail than what I did. And then when you're done, take a picture and upload it to, to Classroom. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, please let me know and give me some feedback. Did this help? Have a great day.